Welcome back to uh, Sunday School Online. Uh, I've lost track of how many weeks we've been here, but um, I'd say probably about 14, 15 maybe. Um, so, as your temporary Sunday School teacher, I just want to thank you guys again for uh, tuning in, for joining in on the lesson, and um, sharing, in, sharing the discussions. Um, hopefully that you've been doing uh, because it's just really these small things that add up and make a big impact especially in our walk with God and so I just wanted to thank you guys again and um, just continue to strive and and work because that's what our faith is it's it's work um, it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of hard work and it's, it's not the easiest thing thing to do all the time. So uh, once again, if you've already been at it, congratulations, keep up the good work. And if you haven't, it's never too late to step up. So um, let that be an encouragement and a challenge to you if you haven't done so already. A couple of announcements. I do want to apologize again for last Thursday, uh, this past Thursday. Uh, everything kind of fell through last minute and I couldn't really get anything else organized. So uh, plan A failed, plan B failed, and then plan C also kind of fell through. So I, was, uh, I just wanted to apologize for that again, especially the short notice. Uh, this Thursday is our camp meeting so if your parents can make it great if not um, I'll have an instructional video set up so that they could join in and watch uh, but basically this meeting is so that we can uh, kind of get all the rules and regulations set up for our camp uh, so that we can all have one a good time and two a safe time uh, there and so if you haven't registered for it already, it's still not too late. I always order a couple of extra t-shirts if you haven't done so already, but if you still register, if you sign in for it, um, you're more likely to be guaranteed a t-shirt. Uh, so make sure you do so already. Invite a friend. If money's an issue, please talk to me uh, because we have a church that's more than willing to, uh, to just come in and help you and me out. Um, so uh, uh, once again, just camp. Guys, this is going to be an awesome opportunity. I really, really encourage you to invite a friend uh, because what better opportunity do we have to evangelize than an awesome you know, retreat to a beautiful cabin. Um, this Sunday, I believe, is going to be our last Super Sunday. Uh, so make sure that you guys join in. If you haven't done so already, it's still not too late. Uh, because, listen, this is a great opportunity for us to just kind of grow and learn as, uh, as Christ followers. And the discussions have been awesome. Uh, we still have some snacks as well. So uh, make sure you come in and join in us for that if you want. Uh, that's Sunday at 6 and uh, we'll, we're usually done about 7.15. Uh, Thursday camp meeting is also at 6. Uh, and if your parents can't make it, please, please, please make sure that you tell them to watch the video. I'll shoot out a text as well. Uh, but that's, that's one of the mandatory things, okay? Uh, so without further ado, let's, uh, let's get jumped into uh, Sunday School Online. Um... <clears throat> So we're going to be in the book of Colossians today, chapter 1. Uh, make sure you have a Bible with you, alright? I want to emphasize that again, like this is your bread and butter, this is your water, this is something that you need with you constantly, okay? Especially during Sunday school, especially during Bible study, right? You can, it's kind of hard to study the Bible if you don't have one with you. Um, Colossians chapter 1. Uh, so, if you haven't gotten it already, make sure you pause the video, go grab it, come back, I'll be waiting, uh, well, I'll be paused, but I'll be waiting for you, okay? So, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 1, uh, let's read it together, it goes kind of uh, like this, okay? So, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, okay? So, a little context for you guys. Uh, these epistles that we call them, right? Uh, the, the books of the New Testament, um, a lot of these are written by Paul. Okay, so these are letters that he sends out uh, to various churches 
um, to encourage him and sometimes to correct him. And in this case, uh, the church in Colossae was not one that Paul actually planted. So this isn't uh, Paul's home turf. This isn't some, uh, a church that knows Paul intimately, that reveres him, that, uh, you know, that respects him as much as the churches that he planted. And one of the things that we notice here in verse 1 is that it's not just Paul, it's also Timothy that's writing. And so this is, uh, this is a very unique uh, book of the Bible because not only are we getting the wisdom that God gave to Paul, but we're also getting the hints of wisdom that we get from uh, a Timothy that God gave him. And so uh, let's look at this and um, if we look at the, the context of it, the timeline here, Paul is actually imprisoned when he writes this. So they are, they're actually assuming that this is probably around his first imprisonment in Rome. And so he's in jail writing this and Timothy's helping him out. So I don't know how they're doing that, but that's that's kind of what the um, the story is, okay? So uh, our, main, uh, our main text is going to be in chapter 1, verses 3 through 8, and it's going to uh, go like this, okay? So once again, follow along. Colossians chapter 1, verses 3 through 8. We thank God, uh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed the whole world. It is bearing fruit and increasing as it also does among you since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God's uh, God in truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant. He is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. Okay? So, a uh, little bit of context here. Right? So, Paul says that he and Timothy uh, thank God for the Colossians. Right? He is thanking God. He and Timothy are thanking God uh, for the Colossians, for the church and Colossae, right? And so, why are they thanking them? If we if we look on verse four, it says that they're thanking God because of their faith in Jesus and the love they have for the other believers. So the saints they're talking about here aren't like uh, these, you know. Uh, revered uh, disciples of Jesus who were martyred all the time, right? This isn't just talking about the original 12 or Paul um, or Stephen, right? This is talking about like other believers, all right? Um, so this is such a big deal to Paul uh, that they're worshiping in Colossae because it was encouraging for Paul to see these other churches that he didn't plant that are so devoted to Christ. So Paul is becoming encouraged because not only is uh, God doing great things through him and the churches that he planted, but through other believers and the churches planted through those other believers, right? Because they love Jesus. It's not that uh, Paul hasn't ever been to that church either. So that's something that we have to realize is that this isn't a first-hand experience that Paul uh, is sharing here, right? But there was just a group of people worshiping Jesus. And so think about how encouraging that is, right? And so God was growing Christians, and this is when uh, churches were first starting out, right? God was growing Christians even in places that Paul's never been to. And so for someone who's spreading the gospel, this is a huge encouragement, right? So, um, so how do you think, how did the people uh, in the Colossae find out about Jesus? And so you might get some answers from the Bible uh, and possibly others, but if we look on verse 7, right? Um, it says that he learned it, that they learned it from Epaphras, right? So Epaphras was a uh, Collegian. He was like an, a native person of that city, okay? Who returned to his hometown, and he also helped the church begin there. So he likely, most likely, met Paul in Ephes uh, Ephesus. 
And, and the church in Colossae was an example how uh, of how God was moving through believers, uh, working together to spread the story of what Jesus had done for us. And, and so in this passage, Paul's not only pointing out that he and Timothy and Epaphras were working hard for the gospel of Jesus, but he also wanted the, the people in Colossae, the church of Colossians, to join in with them in growing in faith. So the gospel was not only in growing and increasing in the world, it wasn't just multiplying, uh, but in the Colossian church. And so Paul is going to uh, demonstrate this in his second prayer uh, for them. So let's continue on. We're going to read uh, verses 9 through 12, okay? And so 9 through 12 goes like this. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. So what is Paul saying uh, that he and Timothy are praying for uh, for the Colossian church? He's saying that he's praying for just one particular thing, that they would grow in the knowledge of the gospel and of God and what he's calling them to do. Uh, Paul doesn't just want the gospel to stop its growth by going to Colossae, but he wants it to continue to grow in their hearts. So he doesn't just want them to receive it, just to hear it, but it, he also wants them to nurture it, to, to make it grow. And so what would be the result right, of Colossians being filled with the knowledge of God like Paul wants, right? So it would look like, uh, it says in, um, in, in the verses that they will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, right? Bearing fruit in every good work and increase in the knowledge of God. And so it's interesting that Paul is mentioned uh, the more increase in the knowledge of God because this growth is not something that stops. Like, you can never know God enough, right? There's never a point where we would say, okay, uh, I know everything about God, and so now I can just stop growing. There's never going to be that point. And so let's read verses 10 through 12 uh, real quick. Uh, it's going to go something uh, like this, right? So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power in according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in life. So Paul talks about us sharing in the inheritance of the saints. And so he points out uh, to the fact that we're not alone, right? We're not just receiving it, we're sharing it. We're not just getting this by ourselves, we're getting this together. So we're not expected to learn about God uh, by ourselves. Right? He's not just saying, all right, here's the Bible, go learn about God, and I'll see you in heaven. Right? He's saying that it's a collective responsibility. And so just as it is my job and my duty to help you grow in the knowledge of God, it is your job to not only help me, but help the people around you, the, the fellow believers in your life, to also grow uh, in the knowledge of God. We are living the Christian life together. It's a community. And so the idea of togetherness, the idea of being together uh, in faith is so important. right? There's going to be times in our lives where we feel alone. right? And I'm pretty sure there's already been a time in your life when that's been the case. And so it might be the, uh, it might feel like you're the only one amongst your friends who's truly 
knowing Jesus. It might feel like you're the only one that's pursuing God. And so that's why it's so important to us that God has given us a community of believers. It's so that we can pursue Him together. So even if we don't feel like there's anyone immediately around us uh, that's truly pursuing God like the way we are, right? Someone to walk arm in arm with, hand in hand with, we're part of a global historical movement of Christians. It's so much bigger than just you and just me. So Colossians, Paul was talking to people who lived in a different city, uh, but who had placed their faith in the Saint Jesus that he had. He was witnessing the spread of the truth of Jesus. So we're gonna we're gonna uh, finish out uh, by looking at how that started in the book of Acts, real quick. Okay. So if we look back in the book of Acts. Um, after Jesus ascended into heaven, uh, Peter goes to the temple and starts preaching. Uh, but he didn't exactly tell them what would happen next. He didn't give them a day-by-day -day synopsis of what was going to happen in their faith. And so the apostles, uh, instead, if we look on chapter 2, they, it says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Uh, they fellowshiped, they ate together, and they prayed. They shared their possessions and worshiped together. And so all these things they did together. They weren't eat, They weren't breaking bread by themselves. They weren't fellowshipping by themselves. They weren't worshiping by themselves. They weren't helping people by themselves. And so from the very start, Jesus commands us to establish or be a part of a community of fellow believers because there's so much more we could do as a collective than as an individual. And so the thing I want you to take away from all of this uh, is that what we have here at First West in America as Christians is so valuable. This thing where we get to, not have to, but get to meet together every week and just share in our lives together, share in our walk with God together. That is one of the greatest gifts that Jesus has given to us. And so I really hope that you guys treasure it, that you guys understand its value, and that you continue to mold and grow in it. Um, so that's really what I have for you guys today. As always, please, please, please uh, share in the discussions. I didn't give you any discussions questions today uh, because I felt like this one was pretty straightforward. But I, uh, I really do hope that you guys write some stuff down, uh, some thoughts and questions to share with your class. Um, and as always, uh, I love you guys. And uh, I'll see you hopefully today, right? Yeah.